Hey everybody, this is Ross. In um, today's video, we're gonna be pruning like grapevines. And this is really the time of the year to be doing this on a, your European grapes. They're very uh, easily subject to desiccation. So um, a lot of these vines up here, like this one just completely broke off and it's, it's dead. So a lot of this throughout the winter time will desiccate back. And if you make a cut, let's say in the fall or in the winter time, uh, it's gonna further desiccate further lower than where you had made that cut. So you might as well wait until the very end of the winter time or the very beginning of the spring. Um, it's early March, as I, I probably mentioned. Normally I like to wait till about mid-March, but uh, I'm noticing that we have such a mild winter, things are waking up earlier this year than they normally do. So I better get on this before they really do break dormancy. Um, I'm sure there's not a huge loss after they break dormancy, but I'd rather do this before that process happens. So we have a, a, a cordon system set up here on these five-year-old vines. Actually, they're, they're four years old, entering their fifth season. And a cordon system just basically means arms. And if you picture me as the main vine, the trunk that comes up, I'm gonna have arms. I'm gonna have one on the right, one on the left. And that's gonna be our permanent system that I'm using here in my backyard setting. There's so many ways of training grapevines, guys. So this is the, the cordon system, the double arm system. Now what I do in the season, because I have these all on wires and, and um, a trellis here with some T-posts on either side, is that I have the main vine on this lower wire here, and then I have a, a higher wire up here. And this is essentially um, allowing me so that I can get the vines that come out of the new growth and I can tie them up here to this higher vine. Give the vines some better airflow and some better sunlight. Um, that's gonna help sweeten up the fruit, prevent disease. Um, that's really what these systems are all about, is maximizing the amount of fruit in, in a given area, um, maximizing fruit quality, and also preventing disease. That's really what all grape pruning is. So, uh, you know, think of it like that. Think about in your, your particular backyard, wherever they're at, think about what the best way to achieve those three things, okay? I'll give you a couple pointers real quick. If you want better fruit quality, get them more sun, especially the grape itself. Um, a lot of times some uh, commercial growers, again, will train up these vines so that the, the clusters can hang lower and get access to some of that sun. Um, and also some of that dry air, but also um, you wanna consider the soil moisture. If you have a more consistent soil moisture that's on the more of the drought, top, the drought side rather than too much water, you're gonna have a higher fruit quality, a higher bricks. You're gonna have sweeter grapes, better quality grapes that then are made into wine if you're doing it like that. Um, you just want all that soil moisture potentially out of here if you can help it. Um, you know, you got a heavy clay soil, you got some, uh, maybe some limestone underneath, you're going to be doing really well um, and you won't have to water these vines. I don't water them one little bit here, we just have too much moisture, our soil is too heavy. So, alright, let's get on to the pruning itself and again, I'm just going to come in here along this cordon and I'm going to cut this back to about two or three nodes. And you'll see they form these spurs um, along this cord in here. And this is a pretty good example here. We have a, a spur that's forming here. I have one node there that actually looks like it's starting to swell. So I'm glad I, I did this today. Now I can go the one on the back and there's the third one up here. I can go and I can cut it here if I want. And that would give me three nodes which I think I will, or I can come back and do two. So it's entirely up to the grower what you guys wanna do. Um, this thing, I'm gonna take this entire thing out here and I'm gonna cut this back to two nodes. So basically we're continuing these spurs. The spurs are spaced at a distance that you like. I think four to six inches is probably pretty good. Here's a spur right here that I think you guys can make that out. No, you can't. So we'll move down the, the line here. And you see that spur right there on the left? 
this is a spur that's kind of failed and it may struggle to to butt out this year in this location because some of this might be dead as it is so we'll have to form a new spur right here and that's why they're getting that equidistance between them you know um, we have some dead wood back here I'm just gonna cut this out another spur back here I'm gonna cut this back and that's all we're doing guys it's really this simple there's nothing you know that's super intricate about this and I'm doing this all the way across the vine I missed this part over here I'm gonna take this out and then once we're done doing this we do this all the way across all the way across the vine we got to take out this this top growth up here that is now sort of dangling after we made this cut and again this is that top wire that we trellised everything to so I'm gonna just make my cuts real nice and neat and I'll come back at you guys and give you guys a close-up once I'm done but in the meantime enjoy the show Some of these spurs, I don't really like how they're uh, formed either. I'd rather have them grow out more this way, again, away from the fence, but you know, it is what it is. I can't really help that. So ideally I'm getting these outward growing buds. And that's kind of what I'm shooting for here. But, you know, worst comes to worst, they grow towards the fence and I just trellis them up to these wires and it's, it's not a big deal. Um, best case scenario, I get myself a, I don't have this fence here. That's the best case scenario. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, reason for that, simply because of airflow. This fence is sort of preventing some of that airflow. It is nice and pretty, I think. Uh, but at the end of the day, I probably would rather not have this here. All right, so this vine's basically done. And you could really do this at lightning speed, man. I'm telling you. This is definitely budding out at the end. So again, glad I did this today. Some of these spurs are pretty weak. Haven't really formed all that much yet, even after four years. Because it takes a couple years for this thing to get up here and then form its arms. And then you got a couple years to form these spurs and you just keep coming back. And there's a lot of growth up in here in the middle of this one, so I may come back and examine this and, you know, reconsider what's going on in here and, and sort of thin this out. We'll go to the next one, see how fast I can do this. stuff back here is dead. I know you guys can't see this. Wow, a lot of this back here is dead. All right, that's it. And I guess by comparison, I can show you guys the uh, this vine over here, which is sort of new, it's the same age, but we had a dieback all the way down to the ground one year because I had pruned this in the fall. So not recommended. But you can see um, it's got to the top wire and it's got itself along this, this wire and forming the two arms. And that's kind of the whole deal here. And what I can do is come in here and actually this is be my first spur up there. Cut this one out. 
And uh, yeah, so that thing's, this thing's on its way. But you can see here's like the sort of the end result of this vine and this is, this is actually cut off. And I have to make some cuts here. I'm not entirely sure because there's a lot going on here, right? As I said, and even this thing comes underneath and bends and that's not good. So uh, I think what I may do is sort of thin this out, but I'm not entirely sure just yet. Maybe I'll take this one out in the middle. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, I'll take this one out in the middle. And that way I have this over here, this, and then that. And then this next spur here. You can kind of see how this is going. So I want to thank you guys for watching this one. This one's got pruned back quite a bit. Um, a lot of that dead growth on the end. But I did thin out a lot of these spurs as well. And maybe we can extend this somehow. But for the most part, this vine actually was quite productive last year, even though it's, it's sort of small, or it may seem smaller. You know, the width of this guy is probably six feet, and that's the, the width that I've given them, is uh, three feet arms on both sides for a total of six feet. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little short tutorial on pruning your grapevines. These are the European grapes, again, Avoid that disease, increase that fruit quality. Um, you know, get yourself a, a trellis system that looks beautiful, um, that also is gonna be, uh, you know, functional as well in terms of your backyard orchard. We'll talk to everybody soon, okay? Take care, check us out on figboss.com, Facebook, Instagram, and we'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. Hit that subscribe button.